Hey, this is Mateo Lane. I'm Emma Wilman. And this is Inside the Closet. Inside the Closet. All right, we are back for another episode of Inside the Closet. It's hot and sweaty in New York City. I feel gross. You look great. Uh, thank you. I was on Grinder earlier talking to some guy, and I always do this thing where I'm like, yeah, I don't really, I'm not into hookups, but I, I mean, I don't mean that. You say it on Grinder? Yeah, but then we exchange phone numbers, and I don't know. Yeah, because yeah, Grinder, it's like you're giving yourself away that you. That's why you go on Grinder, right, for hooking up. Well, I mean, some people go on there for friends, which makes no sense. That's no, not, they you, don't. You go to the yes, they do. Oh, really? well, they say they do, and then their pictures like their anus. Yeah, that's like a soft pitch for. Oh, I'm just here for friends, and then you're trying to like feel it out. No one goes. I told I told this girl I was dating once. I was on OK Cupid for friends, but what I really meant was I'm trying to cheat on you, and you caught me on OK Cupid, and then I was like, wait. Why were you on OK Cupid? And then we had a whole thing. Well, I mean, OK Cupid's that's a, that's pretty embarrassing. I loved OK Cupid. It's so much work. I mean, it makes sense because at the time, I guess that was it was like the free dating site, right. and then everyone it was like, oh, the, it, the it, online dating used to be so shame based. I remember when OK Cupid came out. I was at my cousin's house. She's a month younger than me, and um, her and I, of course, were lonely losers, basically dating each other. And I was like, "You and your cousin." <laughs> yeah. And so I told her, I was like, "Oh my god, Kelly, I found about this website called OK Cupid." We like snuck away from our aunt and uncle, How and old like were you? went on to it. And she went on this date. Oh, <laughs> I was like twenty two. But I, but I remember that it was shame based, and now I was no, I was twenty four. But um, but now it's like it's the only way to do it. I feel everyone, and also now that's such a good point that it was shame based because now it's like we've just cut out all the fluff. Like Grinder oh, could not be more. Well, Grinder led the way. Grinder led the way because it used to be manhunt. I, manhunt. I mean, yeah, I, yes, that's I, where all that lingo, hosting and looking, came from. But the Grinder is a you know I always tell straight people they're like we have our own version. It's Tinder. I was like. Tinder shows you how far someone is by the mile, grinders by the foot. I was just going to say this. You know what I think we should do? Because I wanted to, we, we, these things we want to talk about, but I want to, what do you think, if we were to explain dating apps to straight people, like how would we begin to, like how would you, so how do you explain grinders? Well, I say grinders a step above tapping underneath the bathroom stall. <laughs> I mean, it's a mess. It's not bad. I mean, you know what? You know what my problem with Grinder is that, like, with Instagram and Twitter, even Tinder, I can go back to it whenever I want. Grinder wants my attention now. Does it? And or it's stressful. Why do you? How, why do you say because that? Because people are like, "What are you doing now? What are you doing? What's your like?" It like it's. It's too quick so that, like, that it, can, it, it makes you anxious. People can message you even when you're not like logged in. Or do you have to yeah, be Yeah, yeah, people in? can message you, yeah, because it, it, it shows you where you are location-wise, so it shows all the people who are 250 feet around you, which, by the way, when I was in Ohio, it was like, someone's seven miles away, <laughs> then I come back to New York, it's like, they're in the house! But, um... That makes sense, that's why, so it's like always demanding your attention, because it's just... And there's new people all over the place, it's just, I mean, it's it's all in your face, it's like, now, which, now, and sometimes it's fun, like, if you're horny, and I go on the road a lot, and I just said that to sound cool, I actually don't go on the road a lot, but um, when I'm out on the road you know it's nice to see what gays are around you in case someone tries to murder you i have a question so if you could be in some room and then someone's on grinder and then they could be like there with their wife and then you get an alert and it's like bing 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 bing, and then well, you look at the guy and you're like oh! well i don't know like a gay detective well i mean people don't show their faces in a lot of pictures like if you're on the down low you won't show your face or like people's profiles can like this one guy was talking to me today his picture was a cactus Hmm. So it's like, and then they send you the pictures, but there's no matching. I mean, was you just cute? message anybody you want to. Was Cactus Boy cute? Yeah, he was cute. He was nice. I just, you know, some people, like, they're just so, I'm not that sexually, I'm more, I'm fear-based in everything. So I can't just message someone right away and be like, where are you and let's fuck. It's like, ah! You know? I would take that as a sign of mental health on your part. Because if you I mean, just, I've done it a few times. And if you're just messaging people, where because I feel like, I could say that I would be that bold and like want to do that, but like when it actually came down to it, I would chicken out. Well, like, what happened to the days where we were afraid of bringing strangers over to our homes? Right. Those days are gone. Don't take candy from strangers, but you can get in a stranger's car, drive somewhere, and then hook up and have sex with someone you n like literally only know their like screen name. Yeah, but sometimes hookups are great. Like I, so I was just in Italy and my friend who was with me had hooked up with this guy and he took like for five days, he was our tour guide. He took us to ancient Rome. We took us to the best restaurants he had a piano in his apartment we hung out we had long dinners like grind and i was like oh my god we're getting this treatment because of grinder the magic of grinder i See, know and i wonder if straight people get that luxury no there's more there's less i think with gays and i'm generalizing here there's just kind of less bullshit 
less bullshit. You know what I mean? Well, there's a different type of bullshit, but the but to oh, instigate things to get going is less than straight people. I mean, straight people just seem so goddamn hard. But I got to tell you this. I think gay men instigate, they are the most instigate and get it going the quickest. So they're like the best than straight people than lesbians are probably the worst. No, I just, lesbians are so, have you seen her over there? I, she, I'm going to go talk to her. And then the next day they're married. Right. So you're, you're thinking more like the, like, like, a lesb- I think straight people have the most difficult time figuring each other out because it's just like, there's so, men and women are so t- they're so like girls behave one way, boys behave the other way. You but know, then, we're both gay, so we're always in between our straight couples listening to them argue. They just don't understand the other gender. But I feel like it'll be like when you have, because I'll have be, date with women, women that'll be like, oh, I thought it'd be so much easier when I was dating a woman, but it's just as hard as dating a guy. Now, I don't know if that's just well, like a nod to me being difficult to date, but they're like, it's just as difficult. I'm going to say it's you. Damn it. No, I but, I mean, sure. I mean, it's all dating is difficult. Cause I'm the, not saying one's less difficult than the other. What I'm trying to say is just the getting of going, it's it's easier probably for gay couples than it is for straight couples. I don't know what I'm talking. I am pulling out of my asshole. We, my friend, my old roommate, had only been with women and then she was like i'm gonna start dating men i can't find a girl that i like and i was like that's fantastic your dating pool is gonna open up so much now the caveat was is it caveat or caveat you said a word and i was so like anxious when you said it it's like it's because uh, i don't know what, i don't know what it means either but i've heard it don't you have that all the time where you yes. say words and you're like i really want to let everyone know that i use i had a lot of confidence saying this word i can I say said pretense the other day and I, was, and I was like I think I, I th- I've heard this is the first time it's come out of my mouth. Do you know? Do you remember how you used it? No. Yeah, caveat: I can like throw in there hard because I've gotten away with it long enough. So I'm like, I think it means like there's a blip, like there's like a. But the but it's the gag. There's a ga- there's a snag. Well, what happened with this so girl? The snag was is my roommate goes. I'm going to start dating men. I'm like, that's great, but the caveat was that she like had awful taste in women. So then she also started dating these awful men. And I was like, no, I thought now that you're dating men, you'd like really nice guys. But it's like, no, the same basic things that she was attracted to. Someone being unavailable, maybe yeah. being addicted to coke, like all that stuff. I'm a, that was I'm, still there. I'm addicted to men, beautiful men that hate me. Mm. That's my problem. You are not alone. You are not I had a, alone. I have a sex question. Yeah. Okay. This is a sex question. So last time that we were talking in my like sexual relationship, we had been like having like, or let me not phrase it like it's not my current relationship, which it isn't. I had a sexual relationship where we stopped having sex and like we were just like weren't hooking up for like a little while. And then it went from zero to 60. We had been together about a year and then we had stopped having sex maybe like four months before that. And then all of a sudden, boom, super sexual. Now. That's great, but I feel like something's going on. Okay, so you think that there's cheating happening? Why would something go? It's like this. Like, say you were with a sexual partner. Say you had a boyfriend for like five months. That sounds no. wildly. I couldn't even fathom. Fantasy, Mateo. The longest relationship I've had in New York is making eye contact with a man for two stops on the train. The <laughs> longest. How, which stops? It was, to th- it was 34th Street to 42nd Street, and then he got off. I, I want to go to the On wedding. the sixth train. Good train. So at least you're maybe a classy guy. But say you were with a boyfriend. Say you were with him for a year and you guys have like, you've done all the sex, all the different sex moves. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, he starts whipping out some new moves, like definitive new moves. And you're like, wait a minute. Did you read a book or something? Like something happened where all of a sudden they got these new moves. Have you been pulling away mentally and giving and showing signs of insecurity? Well, we were hooking up. I tried hooking up like two weeks ago. And while I was like trying to like get on top of her to like, I was like, kiss, 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 kiss. She yawned. So I was like, and I'm good. Did you fight? I was like, look, like, what's up? Don't do me any favors. Like, I, like, I was like, I'm cool. Like, we don't need to do this. And then it was like a couple weeks later, she started instigating sex hardcore. And then it's been like sex texting back to like a more normal thing that I'm well, used to. Well, maybe that's it. Maybe that you guys became complacent and then it came to a boiling point. And then the boiling point was you saying... I'm over this, which is which we have launched a whole thing of insecurities for her. And then she thought, oh, if this is something that she's insecure about, I better step up my game because I want to ensure the relationship. But it was like, it was like two weeks later. Well, what do you think the other thing could be? It's I either have... cheating and she feels guilty, which I don't think it's that. I agree. Or it's the she's insecure that she's going to lose you and she better step up. If anyone has any advice on this, I'd be so interested. So the scenario is basically your partner having an... A, a, extreme switch in behavior because to me that's happened with me before when i was when i had my one boyfriend i i noticed when i pulled away because he always had the upper hand in the situation because it was always me wanting him more than him wanting me how could that be and oh 
we don't have the time. Um, but when I started pulling away at one point, I noticed that his behavior changed dramatically. So he would get more interested. Yeah, because they get there's certain people out there. I'm not suggesting that this is your situation, but I'm just saying that there's certain people out there who become insecure in the fact that they they just want some they want that person to always be there, and they they go on the assumption that they're going to stay there, and then when they're not. They become insecure. I do the same thing. When I talk to a guy and I'm like not really interested, the second he stops being interested in me, suddenly I'm like, oh, but marry me. You right. Know, I, I just, that's, you know, he's beautiful. So I, it's, it's just human. It's just the human. I wonder it's why just that the is. the human mind, really. Because well, I had said like, hey, this, we got to figure this sex stuff out. Like something's going on. And then a weekend before that, I was at a, this is real inside the closet, I was at a lesbian wedding in Berkeley, California. I was at a lesbian wedding in Chicago <gasps> two weeks ago. They're getting married. Oh, right. We wanted to get into what are the, the differences between lesbian and other kinds of weddings? Because at my lesbian wedding, I was asked to work at the wedding, oh. which I find to be quite lesbian. And I was more than happy to do it. It was like a beloved friend from college. But like the day before, she was like, no, let me just say this. Out? I don't I care like, if you're gay or straight. You do not have people fly into your fucking wedding and then lift a fucking fa- I've been to five weddings this summer. I've had enough. You it's go to lot. these weddings, you pay thousands of dollars and you stand there thinking, okay, well, this probably won't work. Oh, it's so horrible. And it's a lesbian one, so we're like moving chairs an hey, hour Alex, before. Uh, I'm, I'm Sandra and Sue and Emma. I'm going to need you to pick up all those boxes and take them upstairs. I brought homemade. I'm going to use your joke. I brought homemade water. And we make homemade water. This lesbian impression I'm doing is from my Pat Powers. It's his lesbian Wait, impression. Also, I realize I do make homemade water. Uh, I'm, and we sell it. I my, make homemade. I make vitamin infused water. My daughter's name is Sage. I was making it the other day and I was Basilico. like, oh no, it's Mateo's joke. Well, I, I went to my friend Alex's wedding. Her and her wife got married. And the DJ... We were sitting in the, like, it was a beautiful Southside Chicago, like, historic, whatever. And so we're sitting there, and the DJ goes, for the bride and groom. <laughs> and so my friend Alex, this is a lesbian wedding. Did everyone go, <gasps> She Well, she stood up. The softball team is her, not happy. She put her hand out and then grabbed the microphone and said, it's bride and bride. Thanks. This is my fucking wedding. And then everyone cheered and all the lesbians. <laughs> I know. I know, but you know what's so funny? I came dressed in my Colbert outfit because nice. I don't have nice clothes. So that was like the nicest outfit that I had. All the lesbians, they are decked out in the most beautiful suits. This one. Oh, that's good. Oh my God, their hair, the suits. I was like, good Lord. Were there any hot feminine ones? Um, yeah, there was. It was, it was like a, a, a complete mix of like butch and femme. And were the butch and femme couples? Yeah. Okay. A lot of lesbian couples. And then there was one guy that I hooked up with years ago who was at the wedding and was coming on me real hard and I had to ignore him. You weren't interested? No, I wasn't interested at all. Mm. I was, and then we ended up leaving the wedding early and going to um, a Chicago hot dog place. Holler. It was great. You know how to party. Uh, well, just, oh, I was Liza Minnelli the other night. How'd that go? It was really fun. I was performing you killed it. at the Village Underground. We'll post a picture of Matteo as Liza Minnelli. I mean, I had a full mustache. Could what would happen? What kind of like what kind of interest do you think you'd get if you posted a picture of you as Liza Minnelli on Grinder? Well, I posted it today on Grinder. No, on Instagram, mm. and I lost followers. What? But some people really thought it was funny. Like a noticeable amount of followers. Yes. What? I also have to say, people really... First of all, my friend Monet Exchange, so everyone should follow her on Instagram. He did my makeup. Looks and, great. And Oh, he killed it. We went to his... I went all the way to his place in the Bronx. Basically, I went to Vermont. And uh, he did my makeup. And then when I took the Uber down there, I was horrified because I looked like this frightening woman. And I was sitting in the Uber. I'm like, like not sure how to respond to the Uber driver. He was horrified but then when you, when i got to the village underground people really treat you better when you're in when you're a drag queen they're like willing to talk to you and interested in you and this it demands and that. respect because it's like oh okay like first of all drag queens are known for being fierce plus they're like saying fuck you to so i hate that word fierce can we retire that word fierce that's not good no it's an awful word Wait, I, I think we should start doing a segment on things to retire so why, i like how we're planning this out right now just why for retire anyone. why retire fierce I, I, I use it very rarely. I just think it's a it's an easy word to go to. Um, 
But yeah, anyways, I know I'm never going to do drag again. But it was so fun. I got to sit there and like the light would come on me and I just interrupted Sherrod and Kurt. Why never again? Because I don't like wearing makeup and wigs mm. and all that stuff. I mean, I, with the second the show was over, I had my friend Lily run and grab makeup removal. Like, I wiped my face off so Did quick. Did you have high heels on? No, 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 no. I wore my jeans and normal shoes. And Mayron ran and grabbed me a jacket. Mm. He had a glittery jacket he dropped off. So I had like this really glittery jacket on. You kept it, Mateo, with the no high heels. Well, I just don't really want to walk around with heels on. I've had two knee replacements. Now, we had, there was something that we be- both had, because when you told me this, it made me remember this other, this reaction this guy had to me. But what was the show that you were on where you then, someone sent you an awful message? Oh, Comedy Knockout. Comedy Knockout, yeah. yeah. Let's read this. So, Mateo got this message. Well, I have my website in the, the MateoLaneComedy.com, which Mateo I, never keep, com. I never updated. Just go to Twitter. But, um, I, I, they can message the website and then the message comes to my email, right? Right. So normally it's like, oh, you know, um, you're funny or whatever. So I get this one. The email is don't bother at please quit dot fuck you. Damn. So already I'm like, that doesn't seem like a normal email Sassy. account. Subject, I hate seeing you. Um, <laughs> also, how much airtime were you on the True TV thing? Like how much were you? Like a couple episodes. Okay, a couple episodes. Okay, couple. so he saw you. It wasn't like a real blip. No, he saw. He watched the whole episode. Mm-hmm. So he said, "True TV just came out with a new show, which is absolutely horrible. Uh, but you being on it makes it the least watchable show ever. Yeah, you're obviously gay, but you're just a faggot gay. You're just super fucking annoying. And hey, everyone, I'm gay. Yeah, we get it. Uh, you want you want an episode that I regrettably sat through. I don't know how the fuck that happened. This is the first show I've ever seen you on, and you're going nowhere. People can only deal with you proving your jokes are funny by being obnoxiously gay for so long, so just go fuck off so I don't have watch mindless TV without hating someone so much that I have to write a fucking email about it. And I have a and take the, on the that. And the subject of the email was, holy shit. I have a take on that. <laughs> I know exactly what's going on. First of all, before that... I know what it is. Yeah, he's gay. No, he's in love with you. Well... Do I know love or do I know love? He's in love with you and he's fighting through it. And me... You have to find this man. is for... First of all, let me just say this. Um, I, you know... After you watch something for like more than three minutes and you hate it, then it's just on you. Agreed. So at that point, I'm like, well, and everything he said is true. I'm a faggot. (laughs) I'm a gay faggot. I, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know what to say. Here's the thing. I was talking about this yesterday. Is he cute? Did you see a picture of him? Why would he send a picture of himself? Mm, no, I mean, it's it. just anonymous email of hate. But um, the the thing about that, too, is like, uh, um, like some people, like, I was talking about this yesterday where I was saying, like, uh, there's this whole article about, like, gay men shouldn't hate on women coming to gay bars. And obviously I don't. But you can agree with this. Anytime someone comes to a gay bar or a lesbian bar... And they see it as like a fun outing trip, almost like right, they're watching like they're like, you right. at a zoo. Like, like I don't know how to, how to explain this, but like this, I'm not putting this on. Like, yeah, I, I take it up the butt. The I gay- love Streisand. I'm a faggot. That's just who I am. So do the girls th- when they go to the gay bars though, do they get like really? Aren't they usually pretty cool, or do they get? No, there's always there's very rarely you get a group of women who come in who just want it like my gays. Like, right. and when those women are there, we make sure to you know ignore her quickly but i'm just saying and i think you can agree too that like you're not putting this on no this is just who you are and i'm like i don't know what to tell people but but that just goes to show people hate a lot more i mean this didn't really affect me at all what bothers me more is that i said a joke about mariah carey and her fans came after me really uh, one of our mariah carey fans told me that my mother should have aborted me and that she's a whore and i just wrote back i was like well i'm glad you're pro-choice but (laughs) you know i just can't believe that people are so angry what was the joke you said about mariah i just said that mariah lip syncs Mm. so it wasn't even a joke it's just a fact and you said it on true tv no i said it on twitter and then they kept like tweeting at me and like bullying up on me and stuff and this and that but i and every time they would say something i would just write back but she lip syncs and then that's when they, my mother should have aborted me. I showed my mom, too. It was like, Mom, look, someone thinks that you should have aborted me. And you're a whore. What did your mom say? Oh, I don't like that. Don't get in trouble. Mm-hmm. Stay out of it. <laughs> yeah. I had this guy who wrote me, so I was looking for 
an apartment. Mm -hmm. And I'm responding to ads, like trying to like find, you know, find the apartment. And then I was going to go to this one open house. And the guy was like, here's the address. I said, great, I'll be there at two. And then at about, I think it was like, I think it was the day before I was like, hey, I'm not going to make that open house. I found a place. So I'm plenty of people just don't show up. It's New York, whatever. I got back this email that was like, hey, I went to your website and your talent agency must really be scraping the bottom of the barrel to work with someone like you. You're awful. Like you're gay. You're gay. You're gay. Cool. Gay, gay, gay. We get it. And uh, like just then he just said like all this awful stuff. And I was like, you're writing me right now from your company email address. You fucking idiot. So I should have just like not engaged. And then I looked up the company and I was going to call. It's based in Chelsea, too. Mm. So I was like, he's this guy is awful. But it's just interesting that that's like what. Well, listen, honestly, Emma, when I wrote that email, what I was trying oh, to you say wrote the was. Email. <laughs> when I wrote that email to myself. <laughs> you had it. Co- you had it coming. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I don't know. At this point, I don't care if someone hates me for being gay. I had a comic one time sit next to me and say, because I had an audience member who wouldn't look at me, which I get a lot. I think they think they're going to catch it. Mm. So um, I was in the green room and I was like, yeah, he just wouldn't look at me. And he goes, I get that. And I said, what? He goes, I get it. He's like, I'm, you know, I don't want to hear about it. And I was like, wait, what? And he's like, yeah, he's like, uh, I'm not saying I'm homophobic, but like, maybe I am. I don't know. He's like, it's like if a woman talks about her period, I don't want to hear that shit. Mm-hmm. And I was like, it's actually, it's not for, I mean, okay, there's like too much to like empty Untangle, out. Untangle, yeah. So I left and I was like, I just want to let you know that the things you say affect people in a negative way. And then I left and I was like, really, Mateo, that's the best comeback I could get. It's That's tough. the best I could do. I feel like I'll try to, I feel like that it being an other in some way though, because I'm almost like, thank God I wasn't like a straight white upper middle class gay person as a kid i mean wait straight well, straight See, even what? when i'm saying i'm straight i'm like gay you're even, a straight gay if i was a straight white person straight white upper middle class person i'm almost like in a way because i do feel like being gay that's like the only that's like the otherness that i've had well, i think it, so it, that it makes you more sensitive to being like when someone was first brought up like white privilege or examining race relations i started being like i was more open to wanting to deconstruct those other things well, because i felt othered in a way yeah yeah we, we grow up not that it's the same at all no but i hate y- that saying the gay is the new black i don't like that it's not it's, it's different appropriate. one is oppressed and one is marginalized i mean that's what fran Lieberwood says and, and Ooh. so you all I mean, listen I think um, when you grow up, when you grow up gay or trans, you, you're you just naturally sitting on the outside of the patriarch. And so, like, for me, you know, gender roles didn't really fall into play until maybe, like, third or fourth grade. And that's when you really start to notice that you're different because yeah, get you're in your like, lane. Right. That's, and so yep. you, you spend your whole life observing yourself from the outside, checking constantly to make sure that you fit what you think will fit on the inside world. So you, it's, you have a whole... You know, like I always say, like gay people tend to build a Frankenstein monster up of themselves who they think they're supposed to be. Right. And then when they come out, they have to slowly break that down and reveal who they really are. So, you know, it makes sense that we'd be more apt to listening to other people's problems because we're experiencing it on our own level. I think I'd be a a fucking monster. If If I was like a straight white guy, I think I'd be a monster. I'd be like, first of all, I'd be trying to have sex with everything. I, yeah. I guess that is the. Th- I guess that's the thing. I'd just be. Should I be? Should I be having more sex? How much sex are you having? Well, I have this one guy that I fuck every once in a while. That's great. He's and by fuck he fucks me, but um, it's but he's married. Mm. Openly, you're the other woman. I don't know. Straight guy, quote unquote. No, he's gay. Hmm. But he's. I was told there's an an arrangement. Right. So it's just like you got to believe. Also, if you care too so there's that and then there's this other guy that every once in a while who i really want to marry even though he has no interest and i see no future um i'm just insecure and we have sex every once in a while and it's we good gotta sex. start having people try to like submit to the show any friends that they think mateo should get set up why with, do I, well, 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 why su- submit it to me so i can see so i can see about setting you up on a date i'm, I'm a picky, and then I i'm a come. picky piece of shit i'm talking to a few guys right now that's good and by a few one on, Two on an app? No, I, well, one from an app. We've moved on to from. Maybe he maybe he run me back. The dating app apps I always did. I would do a few different ones, but where I where I really took it too far was I went on Craigslist. Wow, who are you? I know. And I met. Are up you with, a bed bug? Wait until you. 
What do you mean you went on Craigslist? This is, oh, I would go. Oh, I used to go on Craigslist. Eat men for men. There's no. Men. There's no woman hunt. I would go on Craigslist. Men for men or men for women, and I would read the captions like as porn because they would get really dirty. Because like the gay guy ones would be like, I want something I can fuck right now. Like I want some little fuck hole, and I like I like dirty talk. And then the men for women one would always I would like those, and then women for women were just like boring. Hi, I would like to talk to you about. Wait, so you ads for book club? So I, <laughs> so I went, but I went on a date from it. But this was so I just moved to New York, and my roommates were like, Emma, you should try online dating, and I was like, okay, I'll go on Craigslist, and they're like, that is oh. not what we meant no but i wanted to cut to the chase here's the thing with me and the craigslist it's like i want to know that i'm not going to be the worst thing to ever happen in someone's life it's like because i have bad breakups wait that's a horrible thing to say i i have i've gotten better but my breakups are bad so if i go why on are cra- they bad because it's like a whole thing and i don't do it and i drag it out and then I, it's like oh and then the girls usually never see it coming because i don't like say like that i'm ha- that i'm not happy so you're not communicating no i in the past, what I would do is I would in do, the past or present pra- past. I would do. I don't have the energy for it anymore. I would do every single thing to that make them like like me, love me, feel so happy. I would never say. I wouldn't even pay attention to like whether or not we had anything in common. It was just. It was literally like just trying to put on a show, put on a show, put on a show, and then I'd be like, and done. And then I would like cheat and get someone else. Not a good cycle. Are you a straight man? I think so. Yeah. So you re- <laughs> you really. Go for it. So then, uh, then I went when I went on Craigslist. I was like, "Yeah, this will be a good way." Plus, it's like you know the person's going to be like down to they're like sexually experimental. Yeah, but how do you know what they look like? Where's well, the problem? Because I was looking, I want someone like a little bit, you know, freak, little uh, open minded. So I responded. You're a, you like want to go in for it? You're a freaky. I want to go in, but now I don't care because I'm not really fr- that freaky now. Now it's like That's less a lie. Now it's less important. But I responded to an ad that said. I'm a supermodel and I can't get anyone to take me seriously because of how I look. No one respects my intellect because of my physical appearance. Why would a supermodel go on Craigslist? See, I wish we were friends at the time. Cause this I- is such a red flag. What's wrong with you? Was it Susan Boyle? So, so I wrote and was like, I'll respect your intellect, like blah, blah, blah. So her and I are like exchanging like long messages back and forth. And I remembered she said that she liked chocolate, which should have been a red flag because a supermodel wouldn't say that. So then we agreed to have a date. She told me to meet her in Queens at a 7-Eleven in Queens. What? I know. So I thought because what the f- I thought because she was a supermodel that she couldn't be out in the general public. Because you still think she's a supermodel? At this point, yes, I did. Because I thought that I thought she couldn't be out in the general public because people would recognize her. You know, how supermodels are like super tall. Oh, I was like, she'll get funny God, looks. Emma. So maybe so she needs to like meet someplace off the beaten path. Now at this point, my roommates were like, "This is a bad idea, bad idea." But I was like, "Yes, I'll meet you." And I got her this like really fancy chocolate bar, and I got to the Seven Eleven. She's forty five minutes late. Not a supermodel. Yeah, well, I need to know exactly what she looks like. She looked like she looks awful. And the thing was that was scary. It's like, okay, clearly this is a psychopath because she went out of her way to say she's a supermodel. She's not even close to being like a hand model. <laughs> not even like like brutal. And she said she goes, I just had um, I just was I just had dental surgery, and I was like. Oh, okay. That's why you look like this. Did you go on the date with her? Yeah, because I felt bad. I would have turned And you know around. what? She was mean. She was rude to the waitress. And she was taking pain pills. Because she was like, I just went to the dentist. So these are pain pills from that. And I was like, oh, maybe you shouldn't. Maybe we shouldn't drink. Because you're taking pain pills. She goes, oh, good point. I'll do it in the bathroom. And I was like, what? This, this is putting a knot in my stomach. So the second she goes to the bathroom, I was like, check, please. And then I got the check. And was like, hey, I got to cut it short. And then she started getting like weird as I was wrapping it up. She was like, I kind of being like, I grew up like really wealthy and it's really hard. And like, blah, blah, blah. I want to be an actress. Like just like spewing stuff. Ew, and I, was, I don't like, even like listening to this story. Yeah, it was bad. And then so I, then I took the a taxi home and I ate that goddamn chocolate bar on the taxi back. I never gave her the bar. Oh, and, uh, a match made in he- heaven. I wonder what happened to her. Dead. She sucked. I mean, that sounds like... I can't even think of like a... Well, one time I, I met this guy in OkCupid okay years ago in Chicago, and his face, his picture looked like normal. And then when I met him, it was just so um, so much a mess, and I hated talking to him, and then he spilled an entire wine glass <laughs> everywhere. And Yeah, what was... Let's do this. What was your worst date? Well, from online. From online. I guess maybe that one. I really haven't dated that much, so like I can't think of like a bad date that like jumps to mind. Yeah, because when you actually going on a date, like I've met people where it's like we've met up and then that's just been kind of like it, like it's like a quick drink or something. But like a sit, me and this girl were going to like sit down dinner was the original idea. But I then, can't believe you bought this hook, line, and sinker, and we were chatting for like three weeks. 
Yeah, there's a lot of that. There's a lot I gotta of find those. I gotta find those old emails. But, but that was my date, my Craigslist date. Yeah, I don't even know what I'm gonna. I I had to stop telling people. Well, actually, when I was in Jamestown this weekend, people like didn't they recognize me? I'm Grindr. from Grinder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were like, "Hey, this isn't actually you." And I was like, "What?" They're that like, is "This isn't a- you. This is a comedian." And I was like, "What?" And so all of a sudden, I was starting to like. I had to like this one guy was like I don't believe it's you and I was like it is me he's like then I'm gonna message you on Instagram right now and you have to message back and so then he messaged me on Instagram and I was like hi it's me he's like oh I'm so sorry da 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 this yeah in a way that means that people are looking out for you to make sure that the Mateo Lane that they know well I my friend, is not getting this I've had a few friends that I've caught their profiles in New York and then I text them and say are you in New York and they say no and then I message that person and I say hey this person's not in New York you know you're uh you're a catfish and then I report them because what happens if someone's this is where, the part I don't get if someone wants to just like find someone to sex text whatever but if you actually are going to meet up with someone at some point, it's going to come out that you're not a supermodel or you're not this person. And then what do they think is going to happen? Well, that just they're mentally ill. Right. So that, I mean, that's but like, it must be working for them to keep on doing it. Probably not. I mean, I think they just want a day. I don't know. I don't. I mean, the, if people are lonely. I mean, they could say to themselves, I'm a supermodel. And not that they believe it, but they like the story. They like the drama. They like the and lure. And so far from a supermodel. It's like, this is just so... Can you give me any kind of picture? Like, Kathy Bates? Um, she was uh, she was a big girl. How old is she? She was probably... She was the age she said. She's probably like... I guess I was like 24 this time. She's probably 24, too. Okay. So the age what was What color there. hair? Like, blonde oil oily blonde but she was uh, she's a big girl with pasty white skin and sunken in eyes and she i mateo she had a weird lump on her face i guess i don't need to say i guess it's implied that it's weird if it's on well, her face you said she had dental work that's what she said but it was like a big lump on the cheek area what kind of dental work like, <laughs> what kind of dental work i don't know and it was the summer and she had on a fur coat what i know so many things were weird why didn't you did she recognize you because you sent her pictures i had sent her pictures too and and I was, she was 45 minutes late, which I think if someone is more than 10 minutes late. Yeah, why'd late, you wait? I, after I should, 20 minutes, you're, uh, you gotta be out of there. I was so excited for the date. Because going on a first date can be such an exciting thing. Because you're like, I talked with a psychiatrist about it once. When we were talking about it, I was like asking about flirting when you're in a relationship with someone or also cheating. And she said the prospect of meeting a new person and flirting is the same like dopamine levels as, I forget which drug she said it was like. Heroin or something or coke? I think she said heroin. I think I didn't meet anybody Don't when I was in it. when I was in Italy. How did how, how not? I because I think I look like everyone and I speak the same language, so they weren't interested. I was with a six foot two blonde blue eyed guy, and the, the Italians were all like, "Hey, my cat bello," and then with me, it was like, "You, you look like everybody else." Uh, <laughs> so they didn't care. I ate pasta twice a day. Ooh. And we stayed in this weird, like, studio that had, like, the loft space had, like, these two giant mirrors. So it looked some weird fuck palace. Oh, that and sounds amazing. And my friend and Henry and I were up there every single night. Like, this is so gross. But then he ended up finding, like, love. And then I was just on grinder. Was he staying at the guy's place? Or was it, or did, you, did you have to be the third wheel while the guy was back there? Uh, no. We, they, if they hooked up, they went over to his place. Uh, so, so it was just me by my lonesome I feel cell. like getting out of the city is such a good way because like, well, with what we're trying to do, we have to unplug sometimes. Otherwise, we're not going to have real lives and it's going to just be... But if you unplug for too long... <gasps> then you're forgotten about forever. That's. I mean, I feel that way, generally speaking. Yeah. I always feel like, it's over. Oh, always. But you're doing crashing. You were at the fitting today. So you're going to be in crashing, and I'm going to be in crashing. That's pretty cool. That's exciting. Very exciting. Yeah. And we got... I'm going to try... I'm trying to work at another five-minute set, but it's so fucking hard. This is... A, I, I'm doing my... I drew my kick-ass drag queen super comic, superhero comic with Bob the it. Drag Queen. It looks oh, great. Oh, we have to get Bob in here sometime. He just called me. I have to call him back. I love... I, I think it looks amazing. I like need coffee so bad. I had that's a, that's part of the that's part of his um the Bob the Drag Queen thing. It's a special. I need coffee so bad. This is an episode of it. Um, I uh, can I just say how much I hate weak coffee? Mateo was not impressed by the coffee in Jamestown. Were you impressed by no. the coffee in Jamestown? Who everywhere I went, I went to four diff five, including the hotel, five different places. It was brown water and i thought does anybody here i had to go to the one cuban place to get espresso people in james people in small towns don't need to be that caffeinated 
you know. Well, but but don't you enjoy good coffee? I do. I went to a lesbian coffee shop. Bad. Amazing. They were sweet though because they gave me a free. It was a Lucy Fest, so I got a free I Love Lucy cookie with my coffee. Cute. So that was coffee, but with my brown water. Right. Uh, but I mean, we, yeah. And then I the hotel obviously bad at the hotel. And I thought, okay, it's just gonna be bad at the hotel. Then I went to breakfast at this one place. So, and it, it just was, it was so weak. I was mad drinking it. I was furious drinking it. Did you suck it all down though? No, I was like so mad I couldn't drink it. Then I had to, and I, then went, the only place on the way home was Dunkin' Donuts, and I hate Dunkin' Donuts coffee. I'll do Dunkin' Donuts. I mean, I, would, I did Dunkin' Donuts over that. You can get an espresso. At Dunkin' Donuts? You can. No, you can't. I swear to God, you can. I, can I swear, you really? You can. It's, all, it's okay, you can. Because I used to live across from Dunkin' Donuts in Harlem, and this guy actually, this was the first time this guy said, uh, he was like, he was like, yo, like looking good, and or whatever he said. And then I like wasn't paying attention to him, and he goes, yo, you can fuck me with a dildo. And I went, whoa, what? And then I like spun around and was like, I can't believe you just said that. Like, like that's crazy, man. And he was like, yeah, you, you got a dollar. And, and I was like, uh, no. Do you engage with weird people? Yes, I do. Why? Because I couldn't believe that he. I think because you weren't raised in a big city. And I, yeah, definitely. Because I couldn't, but I also couldn't believe he said that. But then it went downhill quick because I was like, what, what made you think to say that? Like, that's such a bizarre thing to say uh, to someone. All right. Um, and Emma, then he was like, Meh. where are you from? Blue Hill, Maine, population 2000. I'm from Chicago, Illinois. So you would not have engaged. No. I, I, let me it just gets put, worse, too. Let me put in an example before we finish this story, because I was with my friend Evan Williams, so we'll get on the show one time, and he's from North Carolina, and we were in New York, and it just shows the difference between city living and rural living, because he's like, I'm from the middle of nowhere. I mean, he doesn't have that accent, but like, <laughs> you know, small town, man, small town, North Carolina. And we were talking, and a, a homeless man came up to us, but he was giving his spiel you know he's got a whole act and routine he's going right. through so we're mid talk he comes up and he, he pulls something out that he wants us to look at and he goes hey everybody let me just tell you this is the thing you need to and i turned to him and i said excuse me i'm not talking to you can you go away oh my god because we were in a very heated right. argument right and he could see we were and then he walked away and evan goes that was really rude and i said do i know him and Evan goes, well, no. Then why would I need to talk to him? If right. I don't know you, I owe you nothing. I, you're not coming up here. I don't know who you are. I'm not engaging with you. And Evan's like, oh, my God, I feel so bad for him. I said, oh, you've been in the city three months. Give right. it five. And then, of course, you you know, but, but then it's like, I don't think it was being tough. But in the city, you just grew up knowing, like, if I don't know you, I don't have to deal with you. Bye. You have to be able to have some kind of, like, blinders on and, like, get the bad energy Yeah, out. of course. Because otherwise, what I used have- to have a guy on my way to school who had no fingers. And he would come up and say it was his birthday. And I was like, you said that yesterday. But he had his, a certain area on the block. And yeah, he they get a territory. School. He had his territory, yeah. Because well, there was this guy that that was always outside the Dunkin' Donuts when I lived there in Harlem. And sometime, and he was always there. And after I lived there a couple months, when I would go into the Dunkin' Donuts, I'd be like, can I get you a coffee? And he'd be like, yeah. And then I would bring him a coffee or banana or whatever. So then one time I'm walking in and I go, can I get you a coffee? He goes, uh, iced. And I go, uh, okay. So I get him iced coffee, bring it out. Next time, he goes, Ice, can I get a shot of peppermint? And I was like, all right. So do that again. A couple weeks later, I asked him, and he says, Ice, like two shots of peppermint. I bring it out, and he's sipping it. And he goes, oh, this isn't, there's no peppermint in it. And I was kind of like, uh. And then I went in and did it. And and then, and that set the precedent. And then I was on the phone with someone. Another time, I'm walking into Starbucks. I'm on the phone with someone, and... Uh, he goes, he's like, can I get, I want to get an iced coffee with two shots of peppermint. And, and there, someone was like, did that homeless guy just give you a request? And I was like, it's complicated. Now you're, the- <laughs> I like work for the guy. Now you're the homeless man's waitress. And, and the, where I drew the line with him was, he was like, you go in and in and out of that building every day. And I was like, yeah, I live there. And he goes, what's up on the first floor under the stairs? I was like, nothing. He's like, any chance I can get in there and sleep? And I was like, I can't do that, man. And he was like, mm, let him try. And I was like. Uh, well, good for him. I mean. Girl, I know you just, you're going to get murdered. And, but after after he got pushy with his request, that, that I said, "Hey, um, uh, uh, we we can't do this anymore." I'm moving. Yeah, and then I moved. I moved to escape the conflict with the guy. <laughs> My friend Ray uh, Hollow has a great joke. He's like, I was, he's like, I was walking into a Seven Eleven, and the guy said, uh, "If you have any change can, on your way out, can you give me some?" And I said, "Sure, but is there another way out?" <laughs> it's just a great joke. That's a great joke. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good... Was that a comedian that did that? Yeah, Ray Hollis. He's a oh, great okay. comic in Chicago. Because sometimes people come up with these goddamn great jokes that aren't comics, and I'm like, you... My Aunt Cindy. 
so many people my are cousin so Kelly, fucking my funny. Aunt Cindy, I was in my, I was at my cousin's wedding and my aunt Cindy was giving uh, advice. Actually, I'm going to save this for the next podcast. All right, we'll save I it for the next one. I want to talk about Italian ants with with Frank Liotti. Let's give our let's give our uh, websites. Um. Okay. My website is MateoLaneComedy uh, dot com, or just find me on Mateo Lane for everything. I for everything. M a t t e o l a n e. And I'm at Emma Comedy, and that was our episode of Inside the Closet. Let me know if you have any advice on how I should handle being with someone who, or if I should be suspicious about being with someone who all of a sudden changed up their sexual energy towards me, literally a 180, zero to 180, and then we got to get Mateo a boyfriend. Ugh, we'll see. We'll see. That's all. Bye.